Welcome to the Olympia Maintenance Program. Your Olympia is designed to run trouble-free, but like all mechanical equipment, regular ongoing maintenance has to be carried out to live up to that design. For continued safe, economic operation, and to validate the Resurface Corp warranty, your Olympia ice resurfacing machine must be strictly maintained under the guidelines outlined in this video. The Olympia should be washed with lukewarm water and a mild soap, either with a pressure hose or by hand. Be sure to immediately rinse off the soap with cold water before it can dry and streak the surface of the Olympia. Hand drying after washing results in the best surface for waxing the unit. A high-grade automotive wax should be used to preserve the high-gloss finish of the Olympia. To properly service the Olympia Chevrolet powertrain, you should set up and follow a powertrain maintenance program with your local General Motors dealer. To begin the Olympia General Maintenance Program, park the Olympia in the service area. Move the gear lever to the park position. Leave the conditioner in the up position. Raise the snow bin fully. Remove the key from the ignition. Dismount using the three-point dismount procedure. One hand on the hand grip, one hand on the seat, not the armrest, and one foot on the conditioner. And put the safety bars under the snow bin in position and securely fasten with the safety pins prior to doing any work on the Olympia. Engage the safety bars on each side, remembering to put in the safety pin. Make sure you don't drop the safety bar on the cylinder shaft. On a daily basis, carry out the basic fluid checks. Check the engine oil and top up with the oil specified in your maintenance manual. With the help of another person, check the transmission fluid levels, topping up with Dextron 3 when required. One person sits on the driver's seat in order to operate the Olympia with the transmission in park and the engine running, while the other checks the fluid level. While the hydraulic fluid levels usually remain constant, regular level checks and topping off the levels can avoid a lot of problems down the road. And finally, check the engine coolant levels and if low, top with Dexcool only. When you notice changes in any of the fluid levels, you should determine and repair whatever is causing the loss of fluids. Check the condition of the alternator belt for cracks and wear and replace if necessary. Similarly, the hydraulic belt should be checked for wear and tension and adjusted or replaced if need be. To adjust the hydraulic belt, loosen off the two bolts on the pump mount. Now, loosen the jam nut on the tension bolt. Adjust the tension bolt to the proper tension, then retighten the jam nut. And finally, retighten the two bolts on the pump mount. A little bit of grease goes a long way and make sure the Olympia will do the same. Every 75 to 100 scrapes, you should carry out a full lubrication routine and change the ice shaving blade. Using the drawing in your maintenance manual as a guide, make sure you grease all the lube points as follows. Press the snow dump cover button at the top to partially raise the snow bin one foot to expose the bin cover pivot lube points. Lubricate the bin cover pivot on the right hand side of the Olympia. Lubricate the bin cover pivot on the driver's side of the Olympia. Push the snow dump control button at the top to raise the snow bin until the bin is fully opened. Engage the safety bars on each side, remembering to put in the safety pin. Make sure you don't drop the safety bar on the cylinder shaft. Grease the front bin pivot on the driver's side. Now, lubricate the upper and lower ball joints on the inside of the wheel on the driver's side of the Olympia. Grease the end of the tie rod on the driver's side. Grease the end of the steering cylinder on the driver's side. Grease the front bumper wheel shaft. Grease the front bin pivot on the right-hand side. Grease the steering cylinder on the right-hand side. Grease the end of the tie rod on the right-hand side. Grease the right-hand side upper and lower ball joints. Grease the blade holder pivot on the right-hand side and the horizontal auger flange bearings on the right-hand side of the Olympia. Grease the block where the sled arm pivots to raise and lower the conditioner on the right-hand side, along with the greasable link pin of the conditioner lift arm on the right-hand side. Grease the blade adjust screw nut. Grease the three-quarter flange bearing where the blade crank goes through the conditioner. Grease the three-quarter universal joint at the base of the blade adjustment crank. 
the three-quarter flange bearing at the top of the blade adjustment crank, the block where the sled arm pivots to raise and lower the conditioner on the driver's side, and the greasable link pin of the conditioner lift arm on the driver's side. Grease the brake pedal pivot. Grease the blade holder pivot on the driver's side of the conditioner. Grease the horizontal auger flange bearing on the driver's side. Grease the board brush swing arm at the pivot point. Grease the board brush mount bracket. Because of the humid conditions the Olympia operates in, all of the lube points must be greased on a weekly basis. Failure to carry out this basic maintenance can lead to damage and downtime. Check the tension of the conditioner motor drive chain, making sure it has no more than a half inch play. Spray grease on the motor drive chain of the conditioner. Now check on the brake fluid, topping up if needed. Check the tire pressure to ensure the pressure is at 65 PSI. Change the oil and replace the oil filter every 150 hours to avoid costly engine repairs. Before the Olympia goes into long-term storage or on a yearly basis, the following maintenance should be carried out. First, the entire unit must be greased. Follow the normal lubrication procedure, plus make sure you grease the four grease points on the drive shaft. First, the universal joint on the front end of the front drive shaft. Second, the rear universal joint on the front drive shaft. Third, the front universal joint of the rear drive shaft. And fourth, the rear universal joint on the rear drive shaft. The hydraulic fluid must be changed. This is done by raising the snow bin and engaging the safety bars, fastening with safety pins. Now, remove the drain plug at the bottom of the tank. Remove the screen filter and clean with a non-petroleum-based cleaner. Upon completion, reinstall the drain plug. Now, unscrew the canister of the high-pressure oil filter. Remove the screen filter and replace with a new one. Reinstall the canister and fill the tank three-quarter full of ATF Dextron 3 automatic transmission fluid. Always refill the tank through the filler cap to filter out any impurities that might be in the new oil you are adding. To change the front differential oil, remove the drain plug. When completely drained, reinstall the drain plug. Then, refill with GM number 10953455 or 75W90 synthetic oil. To change the rear differential oil, first, remove the drain plug. Drain out the oil. Reinstall the drain plug. Fill the differential with GM number 10953455 or 7590 synthetic oil to the side plug level. The next major procedure is to change the transfer case oil. Make sure you use only automatic transfer case fluid GM part number 12378508. Remove the lower drain plug and drain the transfer case oil completely. Replace the drain plug and refill the transfer case to the top plug hole with synthetic oil number 12378508. To change the engine oil, first, raise the snow bin fully and put the safety bars in place with the locking pin secured, and then remove the lower drain plug and let drain completely. Remove the filter and replace with a new one. Replace the drain plug and refill with the recommended oil. To complete the annual maintenance schedule, perform the greasing procedure previously shown, making sure to follow the pattern and grease every point. Spray all the metal surfaces of the conditioner with a light coating of penetrating oil and grease all the lube points in the Olympia to remove all moisture. Make sure the horizontal and vertical augers and all moving parts of the conditioner are covered with a film of oil. To prevent corrosion in the water system, remove the end caps of the flood pipes and flush with water. Drain and flush the water tanks and leave all the drains and valves open for storage. During the off-season, the blade should be removed from the conditioner. Make sure you are wearing protective gloves when removing the blade. Check to make sure the blade edge is sharp 
and there are no nicks. Have the blade sharpened if it is dull or nicked before storing for the off-season. Carefully clean the blade with oil and store in the wooden blade sheath in a dry area. Check the blade holder surface on the conditioner and lightly oil the blade holder. Throughout the storage period, start the engine periodically and let run until the normal operating temperatures are reached. If the battery runs down over the long storage period, have it charged by a battery specialist and checked for load capacity before reinstalling it in the Olympia. To put the Olympia back in action at the start of the season, simply follow the weekly maintenance procedure and enjoy another year of trouble-free operation. The horizontal auger in the conditioner carries the snow scraped off the ice by the blade into the center of the conditioner, where a vertical auger picks it up and transports it to the snow bin in the front of the Olympia. The horizontal auger should be 1 8 inch above the ice level to maximize snow pickup while at the same time preventing any marking of the ice surface. During normal ice resurfacing operations, be sure the ice surface is free of debris. If the vertical auger picks up debris, such as a puck, it could eventually jam at the top of the auger, thus blocking the path of the scrapings into the snow bin. If this does happen, the first thing you have to do is determine whether or not the obstruction is in the horizontal or vertical auger. First, try reversing the auger. If that doesn't clear the obstruction, then take the two quick coupler hoses off the conditioner and hook the hoses directly together, thus bypassing the horizontal auger motor. Push the elevator button and the vertical auger should spin. If it does, then the jam has occurred in the horizontal auger. We will deal with that situation in a moment. If the vertical auger does not spin, the blockage has likely occurred in the vertical auger. To unjam the vertical auger, press the top of the elevator button to reverse the auger. If it doesn't reverse, then shut the engine off. Using a half inch wrench, remove the two bolts on the cover plate at the top of the blower head. Then remove the remaining four bolts around the blower head and remove the bolt and hose clamp. Now, lift the blower head from the unit, making sure not to lose the gear ring inside on the drive coupling. Usually the debris is jammed near the top of the auger, but in case there's more debris inside, lift the auger straight out and flush out any ice or debris that was causing the jam. Once cleared, slide the auger back into its original position on top of the stub shaft. Replace the gear ring, the flood. Just prior to finishing the flood, turn off the flood water valve on the tower. Bring the Olympia to a stop just prior to leaving the ice surface. Push the conditioner control button on the dash to raise the conditioner to the maximum position. Proceed carefully to the snow dumping area. Prior to dumping, check to ensure there is sufficient head, side, and front clearance. Then, push the bottom of the snow dump button to lower the snow bin to its operational position. If the dumping area is outside the facility, make sure you wash the tires of the Olympia prior to returning to the ice surface. When not in use, the Olympia should be parked in an area where the temperature is above freezing and the conditioner in the up position to prevent damage to the blade. Also, leave the snow bin partially raised to drain out any remaining snow or water, thus allowing the bin interior to dry out and prevent lime buildup. Always remember, when using propane fuel, turn off the fuel supply prior to turning off the engine. In the unlikely case the Olympia will not operate, the Olympia is equipped with an emergency hand pump system located under the driver's seat. Open the door and remove the jack handle. Locate the emergency hand pump switch inside the seat box and push the button to the hand pump position. The emergency pump switch light on the dash will come on. Insert the handle and pump it all the way up and down. The conditioner will raise first, followed by the snow bin. Warning! Once the conditioner is in the up position, stop pumping and move the Olympia off the ice surface to the snow dump area. Check clearances and then resume hand pumping to raise the snow bin. Once